Two Oscar-winning lead actresses have new films on Netflix, both in their mid to late 50s, too, taking on some challenging roles. Let's talk about Halle Berry in Bruised and Sandra Bullock in The Unforgivable. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to my spoiler-free reviews for two brand new Netflix films, Bruised, starring and directed by Halle Berry, first-time director there, uh, and The Unforgivable, starring and executive produced by Sandra Bullock. Two actresses, you know, with certainly a big pedigree here, uh, taking on a couple of pretty interesting and challenging roles. Um, and we're going to talk about them in just a second. First, though, I want to welcome you into Damn Reviews. And thank you for finding my channel and uh, indeed this video as well. If you like what you're seeing, you can please uh, consider subscribing down below there or maybe hitting that notification bell. Let you know when all of my new TV and movie reviews go up. Uh, let's get into these movies, shall we? So, First up, let's talk about Bruise. That's the one that came out first. Uh, and I think that's the one um, where there is slight, slight, slight possible Oscar potential uh, for Halle Berry in the uh, Best Actress category. Last I looked, she was still sort of in the top 10 for contention. Never in the top five yet, but we don't know. You know, the Oscars could surprise us sometimes. But unfortunately, this is not getting a ton of great response on Rotten Tomatoes by the critics. So... Eh, probably not, but you never do know. Um, so we'll start with that one. Uh, basically, uh, in this, and I will say again, this is uh, the first feature-length director uh, edition from Holly Berry. She has never directed a full movie before, uh, and, and here we are with it. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit too. But Holly Berry plays Jackie Pretty Bull Justice, uh, who is a retired UFC fighter. Uh you know, she forfeited a major match four years ago, and now um, she's, you know, being a, earning a living as a house cleaner and, um, you know, debating whether or not to get back in the ring because her life has fallen apart and she's kind of an alcoholic and um, all of that kind of stuff. And her, her kid, you know, that she has with her live-in manager is, you know, sort of caught in the middle of all of this uh, stuff. But um, she goes to this illegal underground match where she realizes, oh, you know, maybe... Um, I do want to get back into the ring. So the story sort of, uh, you know, charts her journey from there. Um, and other than her, I mean, I don't really recognize a ton of names here. Shamir Anderson um, plays an MMA league owner. Um, Adam Adam Canto uh, plays Desi, who is Jackie's manager and boyfriend. Um, and, uh, you know, Halle Berry behind the camera... Uh, is not quite as adept as her in front of the camera. Uh, not that the directing is bad per se. I think it's fine. Um, but I never quite got the sense that, um, I don't know. It didn't seem like she was comfortable in that role. You know, I, there's a few times where I was like, because I knew going in that she was the director. So I was, I was sort of looking specifically for things. Okay, not necessarily to nitpick, but just to see... All right, you know, are, are her eyes, you know, focusing on the right things or, you know, is this doing anything new or exciting? And unfortunately, it's not. But however, I don't think the story lends itself to that because this is one of the most tried and true stories. You know, every fighter going through a comeback kind of thing that we have seen 70 years in cinema, you know, certainly Rocky comes to mind the most, like, Rocky Balboa, I guess, specifically, but, um, but there's nothing really new at all about this story, you know, the, the forgotten son who's caught up in the middle, and, you know, the fighting with the, you know, the, the couple, and, well, should I get back into the ring? No, you know, you're not good enough, oh, well, I think I am, you know, whatever, the, 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 in, the inner turmoil and the outer turmoil with that, there's just nothing new to say with this movie. So let's get to some positives because uh, it's mostly negative so far, I know. Um, Halle Berry is outstanding in the role. She, re I mean, she really is great here. Um, and I sort of have, I wouldn't say a love-hate relationship with Halle Berry, but she's made some movies that are easy to sort of uh, put up as either, you know, guilty pleasure or uh, really corny or sort of the butt of a joke. Like wh One of her movies, The Call, um, is a very, very average movie, but my friends and I go back to it all the time because um, it's just funny to kind of laugh about, you know, they gave her this horrible, horrible curly wig, and uh, there's some lines that are just super corny, um, so 
That, that you know, and then Catwoman, of course, she did that. It was it was horrible. Um, so she really has uh, some hit or misses, you know, in, in my book. But I never really uh, dislike her acting. It's usually like she's in a bad movie or the script isn't servicing her. And here, that is really the case because I think she is. I guess pun intended here. I think she's a knockout in the role. Um, and, and really, you know, the only reason I'd be shocked if she did get an Oscar nomination for this is because it's kind of not a well-received movie. Um, but I, I think she is the only thing, you know, really holding it together in front of the camera, not so much behind it. Um, but she really is, is acting the hell out of this and clearly got cut up to be believable in this role at 55 years old. I mean, she is way more jacked than I will ever hope to be. Um, you know, so she really, really went through the paces of, you know, turning into this character. So absolutely fantastic there. But everything else about this movie just falls so short of originality. Um, and, and, you know, I can't say I was ever bored watching it, but I just wish it said one thing different, you know, from, from all of the other movies we've seen before, um, other than a, a great performance, you know? So, um, I, I don't necessarily blame the, uh, the failure of this film on her directing. I think her directing is okay, but it's just not served well by the story that is being told. Um, so overall, I thought this was a, a pretty average movie. Uh, I'm going to leave Bruised with a C. Um, now, my buddy Tim likes to, <laughs> likes to joke that C is not really average in my grading system because I have more above a C than I do below. But um, when I was in school, if you got a C, that was like straight average. So that's why I always say that. But uh, all right. So up next, let's talk about The Unforgivable. This is uh, another, you know, Oscar winning actress here, Sandra Bullock. And uh, she's executive producing here. She's not directing. It's directed by uh, Nora Fingscheidt, uh, which I don't really know anything from, but I believe this is her first um, American release. She is from, what is she, Australia? German. She's from Germany. So a lot of her movies, all of her movies, in fact, uh, up till now have been in German. So sort of interesting uh, that we have a couple of firsts here. But anyway, uh, Sandra Bullock plays this Ruth Slater character who was imprisoned for 20 years for murdering a sheriff who came to evict her and her five-year-old sister, uh, Katie, back in the day. Her parents were both gone, so she was sort of raising uh, Katie alone. And so after 20 years, she gets out and uh, decides the best thing for her is to try and find this girl, Katie, uh, and where she's at now and, and how she's been and what uh, her life has become, even though her parole officer is saying, please don't do this. You're, you know, going to violate all your parole and, and this is very stupid and don't do it. Um, we see some real uh, heavy hitters here. Viola Davis plays uh, the matriarch of the family that adopted Katie. Vincent D'Onofrio plays the patriarch. John Barenthal is here as well as uh, one of her co-workers. She does get a job uh, at a factory, a couple of jobs, actually, uh, as the movie goes on. But uh, now this one also sort of getting really slammed on Rotten Tomatoes, not doing very well with either critics or audiences. I had a little bit of a different take with this one. Um, I thought it was decent, um, Sandra Bullock, again, here we go, you know, a, a knockout performance, a really great job from her, and she has played, though, I think for Halle Berry, Bruce was uh, something completely new, Sandra Bullock definitely has played these, um, very dramatic and, uh, focused characters, like 28 Days, uh, where she goes into the rehab, and, you know, she's done a few real heavy movies, um, she won her Oscar for The Blind Side, which uh, is not, I don't think, quite as heavy as this, um, but, you know, certainly a dramatic role. So we, we've seen her do a lot of that kind of thing. Um, and, okay, great. We, we you know, we love that. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, Halle Berry maybe did not win for lead actress. Was that supporting actress, maybe? I don't want to misspeak. I think eh, maybe she won for supporting. I, I don't remember. But either way, they're both uh, Academy Award winning actresses. Um, but with this movie specifically, Unforgivable, um, I, I sort of do like her sort of quest to find her sister and all of the, uh, sort of dominoes that, that fall from that. Um, but there's a very bizarre side plot here. And this is where the film maybe is uh, going awry with critics. It certainly goes off the rails a bit for me in these parts, but, uh, there's these brothers who, find out she has been released from prison 
and their father is the sheriff uh, that she killed. So they decide to sort of go after her and try and either kill her or kill kill the sister she's looking for. And so that whole part of the movie like goes off on this, I don't know, kind of like bizarre, um, tense thriller type of thing. Um, whereas I think the main plot is sort of thrillery enough because, you know, she's lying to these people and, uh, you know, about who she is in, in trying to get close to their family and she's lying to people at work and she finally, you know, does tell her buddy at work that, oh yeah, you know, I just came from prison and da -da. so word spreads and it, you know, it was basically, you know, blacklisting her from speaking to anybody and all of this. So I think... That stuff is the most compelling. The, the The drama of what happens to a person after they're in jail for 20 years, what happens when they come out of the system, what is their life? You know, and yes, you can throw in the stuff about the sister looking for her and all of that was perfectly fine and very dramatic. And I really enjoyed those parts. But then this other side story, and it, it only really rears its head in the last, like, half hour in a major way. It's sort of like a scene here or there, like, they'll be, the brothers will be, like, having a conversation about it. But then in the last half hour is when it actually, like, really ramps up. But it's just, I feel like an unnecessarily uh, a tense part of the story where I think the main drama here is is tense enough. I, I think we could have gotten by with just that because I think it's a great commentary on these people who are incarcerated for a long time and what happens when they get out of the system. Um, you know, in terms of jobs, in terms of family, in terms of, you know, a lot of things, uh, in terms of living situation. I think that's where the story needed to remain and, and not go into the thriller territory uh, really at all, you know. Um, so for that, I, I don't grade it, you know, very much higher than, than Bruised, um, but I, I do think it's uh, a much more interesting movie than Bruised. It's uh, probably more original. Um, but they need to excise that, that part of the, of the thriller, uh, aspect with the brothers. I don't think it was necessary to tell the story here. So I leave the unforgivable with a C plus, but, um, but that whole part with the, with the brothers, it just drags everything down and uh, it does sort of, you know, like I said, it's a focal point of the end of the movie. So, um, yeah, ha have to sort of grade it as such, but all right, that will do it. So thank you for watching and we'll see you back here next time for another review on Damn Reviews It. Bye.